This episode will be completely taken out of context. Welcome to the Fact Check This Podcast. All right, Fact Check This Podcast, episode 32, and the tables have turned, and we have entered a new era of peace and unity and togetherness and everything has the nation has been healed unless you're a conservative or a libertarian or anything that has now been branded effectively an enemy of the state by the left uh so congratulations everybody we are now on a domestic terrorist watch list uh as spike cohen said in a in a post this morning maybe that means the uh cia will start giving us guns and weapons now or uh money and weapons whatever i'll just take more more guns they don't have to give me money that's that shit's totally useless anyway uh at the rate that they're gonna go and i'll do uh cory who i interviewed on episode 22 i believe it was he asked for a full rundown of the Biden cabinet and what my problems are with all of them. And I will do that for uh, Monday's episode. But in the meantime, we got to talk about the, the historic, monumental, just amazing inauguration of Joe Biden that had nobody in attendance whatsoever except for the 65,000 National Guard members that were there and uh you know the usual uh lineup of psychopaths and murderers i mean uh politicians that go to all of these uh gi giant jerk off fests that they put on for themselves all the time it it's like an award show the and the award shows are done by people who want to aggrandize how wonderful they are so that you can see them talk about how wonderful they are and that that's all any of this uh ceremony uh that the government puts on is like it's all just a, a giant pat ourselves on the back for how well we've done it completely destroying everybody who's not us it's a fucking joke uh so anyway i was watching the NBC coverage of it and it was it was incredible just absolutely incredible the way they covered this this thing like the four words that I ho I heard the most out of the whole thing and this was uh these were the main things that they like really talked about in between just totally sucking Joe Biden off for the rest of the time and I'll talk about that as well. But misinformation, radicalization, crises, and division. Those were the four key words. Like, those were the takeaways from the whole thing. Like, if you, if you listen to, if you listen to their coverage of it, other than coming away thinking that Joe Biden was, like, the most eloquent speaker ever. Like, Barack Obama doesn't even hold a candle to Joe Biden based on the way they were talking about his uh, inauguration speech and everything. Uh, you would think that we are legitimately on the verge of civil war. And they very well may be right. We may very well be. And and the, the problem is it's most... I think I can sincerely and honestly say most of us don't actually want that. But that's kind of what they're bringing about uh just by the way they've they've handled all of this like it is insane the the crises that they talk about are predominantly manufactured crises that the government has created the whole the coronavirus crisis uh the misinformation and fake news is a big thing that they that they hit on a bunch and they are the purporters of that almost exclusively that the things that they refer to as misinformation and fake news are the alternate news sources that are actually reporting the truth like if you don't 
if you don't follow the narrative, then you are fake news. You are misinformation. Uh, the division. The, the Democrats have spent seriously the last decade doing nothing but creating lines to divide the country. And they talk about, and then they want to talk about needing to heal the division. <clears throat> like, you're the ones who created the division to begin with. The best form of healing would be for y'all to go the fuck away and shut up. And just let us go, you know, let us get along. Like, the, the political class are the ones who have divided the nation. Don't, don't get it mixed up. Don't think that it's me versus you versus... The guy on the right or the left or wherever. Like, we are not each other's enemies. They have created the narrative that we are and have stirred it consistently. Like, it has been an unending pot being stirred of all of the divisiveness, all of the hatefulness, all of the just terrible rhetoric. And it comes from mainstream media nonstop. And it, they're the ones who have created it. And then we're going to, like... And then on top of that, Joe Biden, so uh, John Brennan said that they're they're identifying all of these different people as domestic terrorists and going to start looking into, or having the CIA look into them. And like I said, they included libertarians in that group. Like, basically, it is literally anyone who is not a Joe Biden supporter. Like, if you are not a vocal, absolute, just get down on your knees and swallow that whole thing, Joe Biden supporter, then you are a domestic terrorist. And this is like this is real fascism. Like for everybody that talked about and acted like Donald Trump was a fascist because he said wrong things and because he said like offensive and stupid shit, that is not fascism. That that's a dude who you don't like. That's a that's a guy that annoys you. Like literally nothing that he did over those 4 years could be, could be in any way actually classified as fascism. And and this is the big problem that we have and it it's a problem that is rooted in our education system because people come out of uh, out of school, out of high school, out of college, knowing not dick about anything. Like we have effectively useless and stupid adults who have come through the public education system, and that's that's the big problem. Is words actually have meaning, like? You, you need to understand words. You need to understand the meaning behind those words. Like, they've moved on from uh, racist to white supremacist. Like, that's the, new, that's the new trigger term. Because, because they used the word racism for anybody who doesn't agree with you. They're a racist. And it lost its power. Racism is a real thing. And racism is a terrible thing. But it has a very well-defined explanation of what it is. And for somebody to be racist, there are certain criteria that must be met. And the mainstream media just threw around the word racism for anyone who would not agree with the narrative. So now racism has lost its power because... It's like the the, cry, the boy who cried wolf. Like, you keep saying it over and over again and nobody believes you anymore. So, racism lost its power. So, now they have to move on to a new trigger word that has more uh, negative connotations. And so, that's white supremacist. But they're applying white supremacist to everybody, which is what they did with racism. Like, they applied racism to everyone and they made it. Everyone who is a racist white, even if you weren't white and you had disagreed with what the narrative was, excuse me, even if you weren't white and you disagreed with what the narrative was, then you became a racist and you were considered to be in line with the whites. So now it's just white supremacist. But you even seen it, like there was the, the article the other day that came out, uh, I had posted on my Facebook that talked about multicultural whiteness. Multicultural whiteness. That way they can label anybody who does not directly support Joe Biden and the leftist agenda as a white supremacist because now white supremacist doesn't just mean you have to have the you know, same skin color as I do. You just have to be somebody who is a multicultural white person uh, that identifies with 
not <laughs> agreeing with the leftist agenda. Like, the way they twist words and meanings, God, I feel like a broken fucking record because every episode I say it. But this is 1984 being brought to life. Like, it is the Ministry of Truth picking words and changing their meaning to fit the narrative that they want it to fit. Like, I don't understand, I don't understand how people can, like, there are stipulations for what qualifies someone as a white supremacist, and just saying something mean does not in any, like, doesn't, doesn't fit the criteria. Uh, domestic terrorist, like, a bunch of dumbasses who happen to walk into, like, unabetted walk into the Capitol building and take selfies are not domestic terrorists. <laughs> They're possibly vandals and dumbasses, but that's not an act of domestic terror. Like, it is a total fucking joke what the mainstream media has turned itself into. And that's what I'm going to talk about for the rest of the show is just what an absolute shit show that's become. And... And what you can probably expect from, at minimum, the next four years of the Biden presidency, if not the next forever. Because, I mean, they, they set the precedent with this election. They can win it however they want. And they can dictate the, the outcome. They'll dictate it every single time from now on. But carrying on with the topic of the corporate press and just, you know, what, what you can expect of them... So, so it was really funny. Uh, Dave Smith mentioned this on his show the other day with uh, Michael Malice. But in 2016, the the uh, the now disgraced Les Moonves of CBS had said that while Trump's uh, election may not have been good for the country, it was definitely going to be good for CBS. And so he was happy about it. And, and everybody got all in an uproar. But there was so much honesty to that statement, I, and I talked about this a little bit in the last episode as well, but like, Twitter was dying. Twitter was dying prior to Trump's election. The mainstream media, they were reeling prior to Trump's election. Like, basically, they spent eight years of an Obama administration, the entire corporate press, all of Hollywood, all of professional sports, Everything about the culture had spent eight years just sucking by or sucking Obama off at every single turn. Like nothing he did was ever wrong. Nothing was bad. Like the only reason there were no perceived controversies or scandals is because they refused to fucking talk about it. It wasn't for a lack of controversy or scandal, because that stuff was there. There were definitely things happening that were terrible, bad shit that that definitely needed to be talked about. It wasn't because there was no controversy or scandal. It was because the mainstream media and the corporate press absolutely refused to touch it in any way. They would not talk about it because that would shine a bad light on their savior. And it's going to be the exact same thing this time around. I mean, you can sit there and listen to Joe Biden's inauguration speech. And it was full of uh, like pandering and dumb bullshit. And there was no legitimate substance to anything he said. Everything that he talked about with unity and healing and blah, fucking blah, blah, blah. It's all been very well proven just in the rhetoric of the way they've they've approached everything since the election. That they are not actually moving towards any of that stuff. Like, they're not going to take a step towards unity or healing. They're actually going to widen the divide and start actively coming after people who don't agree with them. So, yeah, there will be unity after they get rid of everyone who doesn't agree with them. Like, that that's the goal. And and the corporate press and the mainstream media and none of these fuckers, they're, gonna, they're not going to talk about it at all. They're going to completely gloss over every single bit of it, which is exactly what they did with his speech. Like, you saw every one of them just mouth wide open, just ah, 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 choking on Biden's dick the whole time. Talking about how great this speech was. Uh, and then to turn around and after they get done with that, to start demonizing anyone who disagrees with them and talk about these 
uh, the divisiveness and the talk about domestic terrorists and all of this other stuff, I mean, it's not going to accomplish anything. So what you're really going to start seeing, I think, and it's, it'll be interesting to see going forward, but like the Newsmax and OANs and and uh, Infowars and Breitbart and all the you know the alternative medias, they're going to become the, the Daily Wire. Like they're they're going to become bigger and bigger, and they're going to gain more and more of a following. And people are going to continue to turn away from NBC, ABC, CBS, CNN. Like People are going to stop paying attention to them because they're not going to report anything of substance or meaning. They're just going to they're just going to suck the authoritarian dick until because it because that's what serves them best. That's what keeps them. That's what keeps them in power, in control. That's what allows them to be the ones who set the dict or the narrative to to dictate what culture and society is going to see and think and do. So, so that's what they're going to do, and people are going to turn away from that. I mean, it was happening. It was happening all through the Obama administration. the the main The big mainstream media corporations were losing viewership regularly. Just regularly news was at all-time low ratings nobody gave a shit what they had to say because nothing they had to say had any value or substance and that's the direction we're going to go uh, like and right now they're already they're already getting out ahead of themselves and fucking up the narratives for all of the biden's new like covid um solution or whatever you want to call it so the, they've got They've got too much going on all at once, and they're getting their they're getting their stories mixed up. Like they're not getting stuff released in the right order, because you've got you've simultaneously got reports coming out that there's some new uh, United Kingdom strain of the coronavirus that's going to be even more deadly than anything we've ever seen. But at the same time. We need to start opening up that we've hit the peak, that we're on the downhill side, that um, all of this is working. And then you've also got the reports coming out that the PCR tests are fucked, which, I mean, the New York Times ran that article a long time ago that the PCR tests were giving like 85, 90, even 95% uh, false positives. Like, all... All you have to do is just pay a little bit of attention. Like, even even the big ones, the New York Times, and like even the big ones, they're fucking up and they're getting their stories mixed up and they're releasing things in the wrong order. So, so it's hard to tell which direction they're trying to go. I mean, we all we all know which direction they're trying to go. I mean, they are openly admitting that the PCR tests are being done incorrectly, and I. Again, I feel like a broken record, but like they're getting ready to. So Biden's gonna, Biden's gonna rule by executive order, which that's that's a whole other topic. Like the only reason that executive orders have become such a big thing is because the Congress is such a total bag of just pussies. Like they don't want to, they don't want to actually do their jobs and pass legislation. Because that requires them to get along with each other, which means they're going to piss off the rabid bases that they've created by drumming up all this fear and animosity over the last you know, decade and a half. So, so they, they don't want to actually do their job and govern in any way because it would show their hand that they're actually getting along behind the scenes too. Which we all already know, and that's a that's something else entirely to get into. But like they won't do their job, which means that the president just gets to rule by executive order. But that's not the purpose of executive orders, and executive orders are not law. They have absolutely no binding whatsoever. Like if you if you disobey an executive order, there is nothing that they can legally do to you. If you have a a decent legal representation, uh, you can get off of that because none of that shit is law. It is not legal. And it is unconstitutional. All of it is completely fucking unconstitutional. And it should be treated as such. 
So, like, Biden's going to write all these executive orders for how they're going to handle COVID, and then they're going to try to enforce them as best they can, and then when the 30 or 60 days or whatever, or, you know, the goal is for him to get all this shit done in the first 100 days of his presidency. So, let's say 100 days from now, they're going to, they'll have fixed the... Uh, the cycling on the PCR tests, they'll have gotten all the morgues and hospitals to start reporting the death counts correctly, and it will look like COVID has just gone away. Even though right now, they are also trying to simultaneously drum up the, the fear and the panic that this new UK strand is going to be the worst thing ever. It's all way too transparent, and it's all just a giant fucking joke and hopefully hopefully people are starting to see through it uh i do have some some hope going forward that the the way the media is going to handle everything for the next four years or however long the country actually lasts i don't know if we make it through a full four years with at the rate they're going right now but it is my hope that it kind of opens everybody's eyes and people start to say yeah, this is pretty fucked. We uh, we need to move on. We need to stop paying attention to these people. We need to find better news sources. We need to find a better way of doing things. Because the way we're doing it now, it ain't working. Hope everybody has a good weekend. I'll be back next week to talk about Joe Biden's terrible cabinet and then maybe some other stuff. I'm sure there will be plenty of other stuff to talk about. Have a good weekend, everybody.